Regardless of how you play on your Steam Deck, this video is all about accessories that aim to enhance the experience. And as always, if anything catches your eye, links will be in the description below. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm starting this list off with probably the most essential add-on for your Steam Deck, storage expansion. There are plenty of micro SD cards out there balancing capacity, speed, price, maybe even brand loyalty if you're into that sort of thing. Yep, that's me. The card that ticked all of the boxes for me is the one terabyte SanDisk Ultra. Here in the office, we already use a ton of SanDisk SD cards in our studio cameras, GoPros. So really this was kind of a choice of habit. The Ultra is hardly the fastest card you can buy for the deck, but it's no slouch either. UHS-1 classification means theoretical read speeds of 120 megabytes per second. The A1 rating on it means it's fairly optimized for running applications right off the cart. All this for about 120 bucks, which is pretty decent for an add-on that lets me stow way more games than I need on the go. To really make the most of your Steam Deck on the go, staying charged for as long as possible is crucial to the experience. First, I gotta start with the plug. And the one I've been using is Razer's 130 watt GAN charger. It includes four USB ports to charge your deck, your phone, or any other device that needs more power. Full disclosure, Razer sent this out to us a few years ago, and I've been using it ever since. But I have to admit, it's not the most cost effective, as I mentioned in previous videos. But I'll drop some good alternatives in the description that undercut the Razer one by $100. My portable battery of choice is Anker's 26,000 mAh PowerCore Elite 3. Not only will this keep your Steam Deck topped off for hours and hours on end, but it's 87 watt output makes it powerful enough to charge your phone and other small devices simultaneously. I initially got it as a companion to my 14 inch MacBook Pro when I'm editing videos on the go, but it works even better for devices like the Steam Deck or Nintendo Switch if my trip leans a little more leisure. And of course, all of this power means nothing without some good cables. My daily pack already has a generic long USB-C mainly to charge my laptop, and I could certainly use it for the Steam Deck. But I also like taking around this shorter, more compact cable to keep things nice and tidy if I'm using this setup on, say, a tray table on a plane or at a coffee shop, or even just using this battery bank and Steam Deck combo on my lap. Watch up, Doc. While I don't plan on docking the Steam Deck all that much, since I have a dedicated PC on my desk, a dock can be useful for more involved setups with peripherals or if you plan on playing titles that require a bigger screen and higher resolution. And as chance would have it, my first party Steam Deck dock arrived in time for this video. This device cannot be any more straightforward. It props your Steam Deck up, plugs in via USB-C, and allows you to connect a bunch of I.O. What isn't so straightforward, unfortunately, is the price. They charge $89 for this thing, which is considerably more than the third-party options out there on the market. To Valve's benefit, the first-party dock also includes a second wall charger, so you don't have to siphon the one from your portable setup. And you can update its firmware directly from SteamOS great for long-term support. However, when you consider that some of these third-party docks cost around $40, and especially if you don't need another charger, the value proposition doesn't seem all that great. And it doesn't help that plenty of people have nice things to say about these third-party docks. JS Aux makes a lot of really cool ones with similar I.O. and even updatable firmware via Windows. And if you want to ball out on their highest end model, you can get it with an M2 slot built in for fast external storage. Personally, I'm using this one from iVolar, which they sent out for me to take a look at. It's also in the neighborhood of $40 and has this nice aluminum build, all the ports I'd ever want and does not hinder the airflow on the back. Best of all, it works on all of the TVs and monitors I've tried here in the office. 
It's a sunny. Psych! Touching grass with your Steam Deck and playing in public always requires headphones to keep you zoned in and to not disturb others around you with your gamer sounds. And since the Steam Deck allows for anything with a 3.5 millimeter jack, really, the world's your oyster. And my personal preference leans toward the cans I already use the most for long haul travel. The Sony WH-1000X Mark Vs. With top notch sound quality, comfort, and some of the most aggressive noise canceling around, you can really be in your own world while playing on your deck. It might not exactly be my first choice for gaming, especially for the deck when compared to more compact solutions like earbuds or IEMs. However, the 1000X Mark Vs are a well-rounded option. That's for wireless, wired, virtually any device that you own, and for any type of media, movies, music, even games. Though, I'm sure you guys have your own preferences for what you like to use, so let me know what headphones you daily in the comments below. Magnets! Oh! The Steam Deck might be a portable console, but it's not something I can simply throw in a bag if I'm looking for peace of mind. Preserving both the screen and analog sticks, for me, are key to giving it the best possible shot against wear and tear, even if the console is fairly resilient on its own. Sure, the included carrying case does a good job protecting the deck. However, it adds to the already chunky profile. To solve this, the robots at dbrand have their take on what a Steam Deck case should be. This is Project Kill Switch, and it's probably my favorite thing on this list, despite it potentially making your Steam Deck run worse. I'll get to that in just a moment. On top of its fun name, Kill Switch serves two functions, to make your system easier to hold and to protect it while on the go, all while keeping a relatively thin profile and enhancing the look. Taking what they've learned from their phone cases, Kill Switch is incredibly grippy in the hands. The mix of materials and textures they use inspire confidence, especially during longer play sessions. Extending comfort and prolonging fatigue while holding this chunky as console. You can even option in their stick grips, which not only feel better compared to stock, but also come in this clever portal scheme that adds a pop of color to the setup. Probably my favorite feature, especially as a frequent traveler, is this removable plastic hard shell cover that shields the screen and analog sticks from impact. It latches on snug, affording you the option to just throw it in your bag without worrying. So yes, there's mostly good things to say about dbrand's newest gaming accessory, but here's where the other shoe drops. To really drive that kill switch theme home, dbrand equipped this case with a clever magnetic kickstand. It actually works very well in practice, but this feature, the thing that gives it its name, a switch killer, ironically presents a critical oversight that affects the deck's internal cooling system. Dbrand has a whole transparent Reddit thread detailing what specifically went wrong. But TLDR, the magnetic kickstand can actually affect how the exhaust fan spins depending on which one your deck has. Magnet! Well before this thing unfolded, people deep in the hardware community already knew that of the two possibilities of fans in these Steam Decks, the ones sourced from Delta are whiny and loud compared to Huayang, Huayang? But if there's another thing to hate on those Delta fans for, it's that they're also the only ones that were affected by Killswitch's magnet. Dbrand are taking this setback like absolute champs and are doing good by the situation. Halting new production to retool the design with a mechanically locking kickstand, fulfilling orders in the first wave that was already manufactured, then sending out free replacements down the line once they're ready. All this said, Kill Switch is slated to re-release in Q1 of 2023, and I can't recommend it enough. It's actually made the deck easier to travel with, which makes it worth the pricey $75 for the whole enchilada. Thanks very much for watching this episode of Denki Channel. I'll have links to all of the products I mentioned in this video in the description below, 
And if I missed your favorite accessory, let me know what it is in the comments below.